Welcome to this special edition of $100 Plus Mileage. This is the podcast about some of the thousand plus bills the New Hampshire legislature considers each year. As you may have heard by now, the midterm elections are right around the corner. If you're still feeling on the fence about whether voting is worth the effort, this podcast episode is made for you. I'm Anna Brown, Director of Research and Analysis for Citizens Count. And I'm Mike Dunbar, Content Editor for Citizens Count. Anna, you may feel like you don't have a lot of power as a voter, but in New Hampshire, every vote really does count. And I know everybody always says that. Let's examine the power of one vote. First off, I know looking at election results from past years, every year we have elections decided by a handful of votes. Isn't that right? Yes. And I'm always staying up late on primary and election night, watching them come in. And then you have these recounts and there are always races decided by less than half a dozen votes. So just this year, In the Democratic primary, newcomer Peyton McManus was just four votes shy of unseating long-term Durham Representative Timothy Horgan. Then in Manchester Ward 9, Democrat Candace Moulton beat Josh Quarry by just five votes. Then there's another twist of fate because another Manchester Democrat withdrew from the general election and the Democratic Party appointed Josh Quarry to fill that vacancy, so they're back on the ballot. Oh, that's absolutely wild. Right? We, we'll have to have a whole other episode about how parties can appoint candidates when there's vacancies. But there were close races in the Republican primaries, too. In Grafton District 3, which covers Easton, Lincoln, Livermore, and Woodstock, incumbent Bonnie Ham edged out Paul Sherdwan by just four votes. Wow, and it's just amazing. Like, just so recently, we have all of these examples. It's not like, you know... 20 years ago, there was a closed vote or something like that. So it really does show you. So, okay, what was the closest race this year? Closest by far goes to Conway. Republicans Michael DiGregorio and Mark Hounsell tied their race. They both had 445 votes. And ties are so common in New Hampshire that there is an established process for the Secretary of State to choose a winner, dice in a bottle. So DiGregorio ended up winning the primary based on what is more or less a coin to us. That's amazing. So you've definitely convinced me so far that the vote I cast in New Hampshire really does count. So let's take it a step further. It's famously a huge legislature. Once I get my candidate elected, do they have any power? Yes, listeners. If those examples don't convince you your vote matters, consider the power one vote carries through to our state legislature. In 2022, just this past year, the New Hampshire House and Senate fiercely debated whether it should be a new revision to the law that bans abortion after 24 weeks gestation. HB 1609 was introduced and it would add exceptions for rape, incest, and fatal fetal anomalies after those 24 weeks. So first of all, the bill was tabled by just one vote, which delayed debate. Then it was removed from table by just three votes and finally passed the House by just five. So later on in the year, HB 1609 was amended so that it only added exceptions to the abortion ban for fatal fetal anomalies. And that amendment increased support among Republicans that were holding out, helped pass the bill in the Senate with a larger margin. But still, this was an incredibly fierce debate. And it only got off the ground in the beginning because, you know, one, three, five legislators. And all told in 2022, there were seven votes in the New Hampshire House and Senate that were decided by just one legislator. That's just incredible. And so given the power of each vote, granted staters really have to vet who they're voting for because they're it really counts for whoever you vote for. As Citizen Count staff, we wrote an article earlier this year. There are plenty of self-proclaimed anarchists, secessionists, pacifists, socialists, scientists, uh, massage therapists, chicken farmers, hometown heroes, and recent arrestees all on the ballot this year for you to choose from. Yes. And that's not just a funny list. Like literally we're like, oh, yep, that's there. That's there. That's there. <laughs> and don't read too much into the D or R next to a candidate's name either. So for example, we do our candidate surveys and our candidate research. And based on that, at least 19 Republicans support increasing the minimum wage. You might not expect that. Nine Democrats oppose stricter gun control, and we have at least one Republican who is open to a sales tax, which is typical in New Hampshire. You have like the the pledge against an income or sales tax, but that like that doesn't even hold necessarily. So, also consider issues like zoning, marijuana, renewable energy. It gets even more diverse and complex, and you can really not read a lot into party there. Right, and that's the great thing too about focusing on these state elections is because you know compared to federal, you really do get to have a say and people get so caught up in the federal politics, but it's really the state politics where you have so much power. Especially these days. Yeah. A lot more is falling on the states to decide. Exactly. So, okay. Shameless plug time. 
If you want an easy way to research the candidates on your ballot this November, visit citizenscount.org slash elections and select your town from the drop-down menu. You can also find information about the ballot questions, debate replays, and other voter information on the website. All right, Anna, how about a little trivia before we wrap up the show? What do you have for our Only in New Hampshire segment? Today, we've been talking about the power of one vote this election season and this year, but there are so many examples from previous years, and there, there's just one that I love to bring up, and I'd love to talk about again here. So listeners may recall that until a few years ago, New Hampshire had the death penalty. In 2019, the legislature sent a bill to Governor Sununu to repeal the death penalty, but he vetoed the bill. The legislature gets a chance to override vetoes if they can get a two-thirds majority. So when that bill came back to the House, it passed by that two-thirds threshold by just one vote. So if just one legislator had changed their vote on HB 455 that day, we would still have the death penalty in New Hampshire. And it gets even better than that, or gets better if you're a nerd about the democratic process like me. From the first vote in 2019 to the last, 35 representatives changed how they voted on repealing the death penalty in both directions. Like some people said, no, let's keep it when first they said, let's get rid of it. And then some said, no, we're going to let the veto stand. And so all directions, they changed their 35 of them changed their position. And then it gets repealed by just one vote. And I have to think, you know, that difference was voters reaching out and talking to their representatives. It's not like you just wake up and spontaneously on your own, change your mind about the death penalty. So don't think your voice doesn't matter. There are so many examples just this year, but also in previous years, and it can be really big, impactful issues like the death penalty. Also, just a quick note in case there's any confusion, this vote on the death penalty did not impact past cases. So New Hampshire still has one inmate on death row, but that's a topic for a whole other episode. Hmm. Yeah, wow. And it's a it's a great reason to, like we said, like really understand who your candidates are because they can change their mind on all sorts of important issues in a lot of different ways. And so looking past just the Democrat Republican thing, you know, can help you to understand like, how is this person really going to vote on these issues that could come down to just one vote? Yeah. And I think it might be interesting maybe in the future with citizens count, if we ask candidates a little bit about like their philosophy on how they decide to which way to vote, because I know that there's a lot of different, like, do you just vote how the majority of your voters feel? Do you vote with like your personal philosophy or conscience? Do you vote with your party? That's a whole area of political science too. But yeah, get to know who you're voting for. I mean, I know we've said it before, but these people are paid $100 a year plus mileage, hence the name, and you're going to run into them in your Dunkin' Donuts, your Market Baskets, your gas stations. And yeah, democracy is on the ground in New Hampshire. Amen. Well, that wraps up our episode for today, but you can find more information and episodes at citizenscount.org. We'd like to thank Franklin Pierce University for producing and the Granite State News Collaborative for hosting. Our theme music is composed by me, Mike Dunbar. And lastly, we thank you for giving us a listen and thinking about how you can be part of what makes New Hampshire by the people for the people. 